Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamara Todd and I'm a pro makeup artist from London. This week I received a request from one of my subscribers to record a video on how would I do the makeup in hot humid environments. So I wanted to address this and I wanted to give you a few tips or tricks or also my take on how I would work with different skin types, the dry skin and the oily skin in a hot humid environments. Let's get to it. Now let's have a think about the humid environment. Usually the temperatures are high and the humidity in the air is also very high. So that means that not only you as a human being going to get hot and sweaty, the environment around is also of that hot and sweaty finish. The skincare is going to be super crucial if we want the makeup to last. Even if you are oily, you still need to prepare your skin. And if you are dry, just because you're going to produce a lot of sweat throughout the day doesn't mean that you can't use any moisturizers we still need to moisturize our skin but the choice of moisturizers has to be more on the light side hyaluronic acid is your friend in a humid environment hyaluronic acid pulls the moisture outside of the environment and brings it into our skin. One gram of hyaluronic acid can withhold six liters of water. Now that is if the environment is humid. If the environment is dry, it almost like the other way around, the hyaluronic acid tends to take the skin out of your face and bring it out to the surface. So in a humid environment, hyaluronic acid is very, very good for us. On its own, hyaluronic acid doesn't have any moisturizing properties. It is. We definitely need to use it underneath every cream, preferably when your skin is freshly washed and is not super dry. Put the hyaluronic acid on and let that soak in. It will lock the residue of moisture. Also, if we follow up with light moisturizers on top, it's going to seal that layer of hydration in your skin. The hyaluronic acid will not evaporate really quickly. Next, we want to use a very light but still hydrating facial cream. My skin is more on a dry side if I was to do my makeup in a super hot environment I would use something like this normally I like to use magic cream from Charlotte Tilbury but if I was to travel to a humid environment and I know I would sweat a lot I would want something that is a little bit lighter and yet is still moisturizing for the oily skin I can recommend Ilia Masca Hydra Veil this is a hydrating cream of gel consistency it actually <laughs> looks like water very lightweight product it doesn't leave a greasy residue so for somebody with oily skin I could definitely recommend we are also not forgetting about the under eye area the cream I have picked today is from Jones Road normally on myself I love magic cream from Charlotte Tilbury I love it for its very rich consistency but I feel like if I was to go out in a very hot humid environment I probably would avoid using it just because it's too reach for that weather so for this reason jones road eye cream is going to be perfect it's very light in consistency and you only need a little bit of it it absorbs much faster than charlotte tilbury's magic cream and it doesn't leave that residue not of the greasiness but that kind of a rich feel rich moisture on the surface which normally i adore but as we are doing such specific video requests today let me show you all of the products that i need know are going to work and are not going to cause you any issues with the product moving around. I already feel that it's absorbed in and there is no greasy residue. It's just moisturized, a little bit tacky skin. This is good enough. Now, next step would be the primer. My advice would be to avoid any creamy silicone-like primers. They do clog the pores and if you are on oily side, as much as you think it would would be amazing to have that flawless canvas. What will happen throughout the day is that these silicone based primers will overlay your skin and it's almost going to create the effect of plastic on your skin. This silicone layer usually does not allow air to circulate as freely in between the layers of the skin. The oil is going to start breaking down the silicone and unfortunately throughout the day with powdering on top or touching up makeup, everything can just end up being really messy and really cakey. So instead of silicone or any creamy primers use spray primers because I feel like they don't leave a residue of that tackiness or creaminess on the skin if you're really worried
worrying for your makeup not staying well you can also spray the setting spray underneath the foundation how i would apply makeup if that was let's say for the bride or for any private client whose makeup needs to last i would spray a primer then i would work in a very thin layers and then i would spray the beauty blender with the fixing spray and then i would push it into the skin now we are moving on to the foundation choice you want to avoid very thick full coverage foundations if you already have a really nice skin then that should not be a problem however i understand that for the ladies that have imperfections on the skin and perhaps a fuller coverage formula is needed but in this case pick something that is oil control is not too moisturizing on a skin the more moisture is in the foundation the more these textures need to be powdered so the foundation i picked today is from lisa eldridge this is self-setting foundation in the previous video i used a very thick moisturizer underneath to work on my skin today i'm not going to do that so that light moisturizer from charlotte tilbury should do the job because I know that I'll be sweating anyway so that will break down foundation a little bit more and it will kind of end up being more moisturizing for somebody with the oily skin I think this will be a wonderful choice the foundation is not the most moisturizing on its own so I'm going to mix in my shade in here and I'm going to spray the beauty blender with the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray this will be kind of a first layer of adhering back in the day when I used to dance in Ibiza it was super hot during the daytime we we're dancing at 12 o'clock and up until the sunset I didn't use very much makeup at all on my skin I mean we all were super tanned and usually with the sun even if you have problematic skin it kind of tends to clear up I remember that I picked that foundation from Kiko that was super lightweight because anything that was super thick would just run off my face and like you would just have to clean up all the time and it would just make a mess it was almost easier for me to be applying super light foundation throughout the day and if I needed to just lightly reapply it in between the the dancing sets but really I just remember that it lasted really really well I didn't powder very much either I would just use a setting spray I think or back in the day that was really long time ago when we didn't have a setting spray we actually used to use the hairspray and it did work the same way it did seal the makeup in place and it lasted all night okay guys so you can see i have applied a very thin layer for me this would be enough if you guys like fuller coverage you can always go over and add one more layer and spray the beauty blender once again with the setting spray just to make sure that everything is adhering really well onto the face next thing i'm going to do is apply concealer now if you can avoid applying concealer if you can't and you must put some brighter cover underneath i would advise to use something that is more long wearing today i've picked the estee lauder double wear concealer normally that's not a concealer for me because i like more moisturizing formulas formulas that don't tend to perhaps last as long but like give me that radiance if i was to do makeup that i really needed to stay throughout the day and then i think I would choose the double wear and I would do the same as I did with the foundation use a fine layer take it out with a beauty blender and then in a very thin layer so apply underneath the eye let me mix these two together this is one of my favorite concealers for bridal work the consistency of it is actually quite medium I would say but the amount of pigment is insane so this is why it overlays everything really well on me today this is um, this is wonderful actually <laughs> I really like what I see. I mean, my lighting scenario today is a little different to my previous videos, so everything reflects a little bit more. If I didn't have all of these lights, it probably would not be the most reflecting makeup, but I actually really like the texture. Again, if you are the person that really worries for the makeup that it's not gonna last, you can go over and spray your face one more time with uh, the setting spray. And today I'm showing Charlotte Tilbury to you, but there is also so Urban Decay All Nighter. It's a very long wearing setting spray. I don't have it anymore in my kit just because I prefer this one at the moment. But the All Nighter is also an amazing option. Now we are reaching the point of powdering. 
powdering in a hot, humid environment, mm, that's a tough subject. So I would say if you have normal skin and not oily skin and you, let's say, chose a foundation that is not the most moisturizing like me today, like I chose Lisa Eldridge and I know that this is a self-setting foundation, I would try not to powder for as long as I can until I really need to powder. I would be safer patting the oily areas first and then seeing how my makeup wears throughout the day. And if I really got to the point where I feel like, okay, I need a powder because foundation maybe opened up somewhere too much and I just need to blend everything again, I only then would use a powder. If you want to go ahead and powder, so something like this by Terry Hyaluronic Acid Powder is really good. If you like thicker powders than maybe Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Powder. But again, I would only use it on the areas where you really, really need to control that shine. And only after I would have pat everything with the very soft tissue. Because guys, if you powder once throughout the day, that's one story. But if you powder 20 times throughout the day, I can guarantee you, if you're really oily, the whole thing is just going to become like a pancake. Now, the eyebrows. You guys see me using this a lot. I feel like this is one of the best products to control the eyebrows throughout the day. This has got to be eyebrow gel and this is a transparent gel once it's on the eyebrows I don't think anything can move it so if you don't require filling your eyebrows in but you just want that perfect kind of a, a finish this will be perfect and I am pretty sure that this will withstand even very oily skin any other eyebrow tints with the color I don't know because I feel like when you start sweating the oils will start breaking the product down and it may move around now if you really need to fill in your eyebrows use something that is very long wearing for me this is anastasia beverly hills deep brow pomades remember one thing any waterproof makeup will be removed with oils right so any oily makeup remover will break down any waterproof makeup when we sweat and especially if you're really really oily the more oils you will produce the more the oils will start breaking down even your waterproof makeup just bear that in mind and perhaps avoid applying a lot of color on the eyebrows because especially this area around here this is where we tend to sweat the most there is also a possibility of the product breaking down and drooping down your face sorry but it is true that about the eyebrows talking about the mascara I would say waterproof mascara if that's a wedding, celebration. Well, currently my favorite mascaras are Excess Volume from Max Factor. This one now is discontinued and this is my last package that I could find online and I don't know what I'm gonna do when this one is done. Another mascara that I really like is Waterproof Mascara from Ilia Masca. This one is also really good. I use it on my brides. One trick that I wanted to talk about, if you are are the bride where it is a special occasion where you you must have definition on the eyes but you are very oily and you're really worried about the lashes there is a trick and i mean it's it's just a common sense but it's something that i think about and something that i use when i'm working with a very hooded and very oily eyelids and besides possibility of having eyelash extensions that's one wonderful choice now if that's not you or you don't want to have it you can use the individual lashes with the duo glue this is one of the most waterproof glues on the market this is latex based glue and it comes in a light shade uh, that turns transparent and the black color the formulas are almost identical and these are individuals now i'm not going to put this on but just to give you an idea so you would place these lashes to make a natural eyelash appear fuller. If you are to stash these lashes and use the duo glue, you're pretty guaranteed that they're gonna last throughout the whole day. And then if your lashes are super straight and unruly, there are LVL options available, the chemical perm for your lashes where they will curl your lash and then it's easier to stash the individual lashes on top and everything together lasts well. You can go as far as let's say curling your lashes and then using the clear brow gel to keep them in place and then putting these ones on. There are so many ways how we can think how to prolongate makeup or cut the corners on certain things like mascaras and oily skin and hooded eyelid. So that is about the lashes. 
no liner i find that the best long wearing liners even with the oily skin are the waterproof eyeliner pens these are really really good now personally i don't possess them in my kit the reason for that is very simple it's not hygienical for me to use them on multiple clients so either you are purchasing one of these and you're gifting it to your clients afterward either you are discussing this with your client they purchase that and you're using it on them but i find that they tend to last much longer longer than the gel liners including the gel liner from Inglot number 77 that I personally use in my kit just because it is the most hygienic way of how I can protect my clients okay eyeshadows mm -hmm. another thing forget about any shimmery liquid eyeshadows that don't have a long staying power charlotte tilbury's eyes to mesmerize i wouldn't even go there like they just will not withstand the heat and then with the oils producing on the eyelid that will just become one big mess now if you really want to wear an eyeshadow or really need to wear an eyeshadow use an eyeshadow primer i have this one from urban decay this is anti-aging eyeshadow primer i use this mostly on mature clients of mine on my own eyelids on drier eyelids it's very moisturizing it's very reflective on any drier eyelids on any eyelids that have like creasing or like a first aging signs this would be really good now if you're oily i would not recommend this one but i would recommend you the primer from nars i just reordered it but my primer finished it's a white tube and it is one of the best eyeshadow primers that i have tried personally now if you have any other primers that you guys love pop them in the comments let's share that information because i know that this subject is important for a lot of use you want them layers to be as fine as possible so I'll probably just take the excess off the back of my hand in the thinnest layer apply it all over my eyelid and the choice of the eyeshadows would be falling into something more natural i wouldn't go with super heavy eye makeup looks i mean if you need that look perhaps Perhaps the lashes could do it you know that eyeliner I spoke about but I very strong eyeshadows it just depends how hot and how humid it will get but I would try to avoid if I needed any kind of eyeshadow overlay or any colors on my eyes then I would go for something that is quite pigmented uh, almost like that in between the velvet and the powder texture something that will grip onto the skin of the eye really well the first eyeshadows that come to my mind are the eyeshadows from Lisa Eldridge the the color payoff of these eyeshadows is wonderful it's not too creamy not too powdery it's a very wonderful in between kind of velvety texture you kind of swoosh it it's just there and they stay really well as well and when they combined with an eyeshadow primer i believe they would stay even better so creamy eyeshadows don't go there you may know that i like to use paint pots uh, which usually i use as an eyeshadow primer but even paint pots if that was like 40 degree weather and super humid i probably would just try to avoid just to avoid the layering of products so these layers are as fine as possible and like that one layer it's there so i don't have to layer multiple products on top of each other so throughout the day with eyelids producing oils that's gonna start breaking my eyeshadows down my primers down and then everything is just gonna end up being a mush I didn't touch the subject of contouring. Probably me as a professional artist, I would try to contour with the different shade of the foundation. Again, for the purpose of avoiding layering several products. And as we know, contouring products, they can be powder or they can be creams. And usually the creamy contouring products, they're quite moisturizing for the purpose of blending them into the skin really easy. Creamy products in a super hot humid environment i would try to avoid now if i needed to create a light definition with the powders apply in a really fine layer and for the blusher avoid any creamy blushers for sure usually creamy blushers are more moisturizing they're not oily but have much more moisture in them so they can break down the foundation underneath especially with the heat the humidity and your own oils coming through so either use powders in a very fine layer i personally probably would avoid any shimmery products but again if you like that glow 
why not just don't go glittery because throughout the day it's just gonna go even more glowing i wanted to show you my new blusher a neo nude melting color balm for cheeks and eyes it looks quite dark but it's actually beautiful on the medium and up to darker skin tones it's very light in consistency and this is the that texture that is it's kind of not the powder and it's also not the cream in between i really like these textures nowadays so you can see the color payoff is actually really strong but that's if i put the pressure in with the finger on the brush it never comes out as strong especially as i'm using a natural bristle brush so i would just tap a little bit of color here and as you can see you see it barely picks the color that allows me to pick up a really fine layer so i would again just use a very light layering only on the parts where I need to. Oh, it's just such a beautiful product. These are my new ones. I've only recently just tried them out and I actually really, really like them. This blusher goes on really, really nice and really light, but it's also buildable. And what I like about it is that it looks like skin. Good thing as well is that I did not powder my foundation, which means that I'm applying the blusher, which will set my foundation in place a little bit more. Now talking about the highlight if you guys want to glow and i know this is the hardest part because you probably will glow anyway avoid all over glowing sprays like iconic setting sprays with the shimmer use the highlighting products in a controlled way if you are on a drier side like me i think for myself i would go ahead and could use um, the liquid highlighter something like charlotte tilbury's flawless filter which is actually quite creamy but if you are on the oily side i would advise you to avoid using this product pick up a little bit of the product on the beauty blender if you want to spray the setting spray you can this will be an extra layer of kind of a protection throughout the day this is how i would do it if you are oily think avoid any creamy or like liquidy highlighting textures over your foundation perhaps use the powders instead that's if you really really want that highlighter and really want that glow any powder highlighters will do the job i mean i I have this new one from Charlotte Tilbury in here this one in the shade pillow talk that is a little bit more like shimmery -er not so much glittery here but like more metallic -y finish so that's quite strong highlighter besides this one there are plenty highlighters out there another cool highlighter if you're oily could be these two powders from the brand hourglass ambient lighting powders these can be used all over the face in a normal environment of course in the humid environment and hot environment if you are oily this could be your highlight the super fine malted powder which is designed not only to set your foundation but also finest particles in that powder kind of help to reflect the light if you are oily this could be a really nice solution for you for the day and just use it on the highest points of the cheeks for that extra glow now we're going to talk about lipsticks if you are not a lipstick person perhaps light tinted balm will do the job just right but if it is a special occasion and you know we must wear a lipstick again my advice would be to wear anything that is long wearing and anything that is waterproof two of my favorite waterproof products for the lips are the lip liners from charlotte tilbury and the lip liners from lisa eldridge they actually even look very similar i mean i don't know <laughs> If they come from a same factory but they're very very similar in texture and color payoff how they wear how long they last once they go on the lip they stay there so let's say you got hot throughout the day a little bit of a sweat and you know we guys we sweat around the nose area and usually it drips down onto the lips these pencils will withstand it and i can vouch for that now if you don't want super defined lip i really like these fancy beauty lip tint the color choice is not the richest i think there's something around eight or ten colors maybe but there's like pink nude brown really dark brown and like two shades of red and one pink i think why they're amazing is first of all they are very long wearing second of all you can regulate the color shade one is uncuffed the true color payoff is this but if you don't want it to be that strong you can shear it down pretty much to a 
really light kind of lip stain with each swatch the color is fading away but you really can get a several shades with this today is not blending really well from a super defined lip like this lighter 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 to almost like a petal looking like natural lip shade but better literally just kind of like a water with a color you can't even feel it on your lips it's very similar to my natural lip color when applied so lightly once it's dry it's pretty transfer proof as well yeah you see it's a wonderful alternative for any lipsticks and for longevity and before i forgot a little trick as well this can be used as a blusher if you wanted to match your lip to your cheeks you can just swoosh a little bit on the back of your hand and just shear it down to the texture you want and in a very light layer just dab around the cheeks again once it grips it stays there so for the hot humid environments this is a wonderful product and you almost get two in one and another lipstick i wanted to show you is my recent discovery the lip power from armani these i've tried only a few weeks ago i am shocked about the quality of these lip power lipsticks they are luster finish so they're not mattifying but the staying power of these lipsticks guys i can't tell you these remind me of the maybelline lipsticks you know the ones you apply and they look like they're glossy but they last really long so these are very similar but obviously more expensive version a few weeks ago I was recording um, a talking video and we were doing the whole day shoot and I had this Armani lipstick on I swear to God I have topped it up twice throughout like 12 hour day I used the waterproof pencil from Lisa Eldridge to line my lips all over and then I used this Armani lip tint and honestly I have shot the video I have ate throughout brushed my teeth twice and recorded for 12 hours and I think I've only topped it up like one and a half or two times throughout the day it is amazing that's pretty much it this is my very light coverage makeup done i mean you guys regulate how heavy you want to go but do bear in mind that layers will start moving around throughout the day if it's super super hot i hope that this video helped you at least a little bit i hope you understand how the products and the humid hot weather kind of work together let me know if any of these tricks worked for you i'll be really grateful to hear from you and thank Thank you once again for watching. I see you on my next one.